Alyssa and this is the book break and today we're at the Salt Lake Fan X comic convention and we're gonna talk to some really awesome people so many authors artists just fun stuff let's go talk to them Today, I am interviewing Brian McClellan. Hi. Okay, Brian, so you have some really awesome books. I need you to start off with talking to me about Uncanning Collateral. So, this is my most recent book. Um, I, it's, it's a little bit of an experiment for me. Uh, if you know who I am, I, I write big, fat, epic fantasy books, like this one right like here. This. Um, and that's kind of what I've made my career on. Uncanny Collateral is a new thing for me, though. It's a self-published urban fantasy uh, about a collection agent who works for hell. Um, it's kind of, uh, it's much smaller, it's quick, funny, uh, kind of hard-hitting action kind of thing, uh, modern, and it's set in Cleveland, which is where I grew up, uh, which is, I wanted to kind of have that, that rust belt feel to it. So so this is my latest thing and uh, I'm really pleased with it. It just went on sale like two weeks ago I think. Awesome. Uh, so and is, very it, fresh. is this going to be a series or is this Yes. A this is the first in a series. I hope to do a couple of these every year. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, if I have time. Um, and uh, and kind of have stagger these with my big epic fantasies. And tell me a little bit more about what age level can read this. Um, so this one is uh, it's a little bit higher age level. I would say 15 or so um, is probably the youngest. There's a, there's a lot of swearing in it. You have some sexual references, but not. It's not. It's not really bad or anything. Um, but yeah, I'd say 15 is is where I'd aim at. Basically, follows this collection agent um, as he gets a new job from death who has a, a, a bunch of souls have gone missing nice. and uh, and death needs somebody to take care of it uh, and comes to this character and uh, and you follow the character you know as as he's kind of doing his routine thing as a collection agent yeah. you know kind of dog the bounty hunter kind of thing um, but this is a special job and it's got higher consequences than his normal stuff and uh, you know he just got has to has to get it done that so awesome. Okay, so this is new. Now let's talk about your like meteor epic fantasies. And this is the first book in a series. Yes. Tell me about this. So Promise of Blood is a uh, I call it flintlock epic fantasy. So instead of being more medieval, uh, it's uh, based around kind of the French Revolution, Napoleonic era. Kind of I wanted to have a, an industrial feel to it, um, but it's secondary world. Uh, you know so. Totally Totally new, um, totally new world. It starts off with one of the main characters is the field marshal of his country, uh, and it starts off with him sending the king and all the nobility to the guillotine uh, oh, wow. in a big military wow. coup. And and his his idea is that he is trying to give the country back to the people. Uh, that he you know he's he's sick of all the corruption and everything. You know very uh, you know very kind of justice and end the monarchy kind of feel to it. Uh, but as it starts that way because that one action causes a ton of problems yeah. uh, in terms of you know all the countries around him are furious because they're all still ruled by kings yeah. um, much like what happened in the French Revolution right, um, right. and uh, but it also uh, has further reaching magical consequences uh, with gods and giant battles and things like that going on uh, that all escalate and it's basically uh, all the the entire trilogy is all the consequences of that one big event. And and is there another trilogy after this one in this same world? There is, yes. There's a sequel trilogy. Uh, they don't have to be read in any kind of order. Um, but uh, that one starts with Sins of Empire, and uh, and it's ten years after the end of this series, and uh, with a different set of characters, different uh, all the way across the ocean. Uh, but you see kind of familiar faces, and it's a familiar world in terms of the magic and the settings. Um, and that series uh, is going to be finished in December with Blood of Empire, which is my my last Powder Mage book. Okay, so the last of that series is going to be done December 2019. Yes. Okay, awesome. Okay, so I gotta ask, 
I mean, you have so many books. Do you write full time or do you still maintain a day job? I do. I write full time. Um, I make a pretty dang good living at it. Nice. Um, you know, you know, to brag a little bit. Hey, uh, go ahead. I mean, that's kind of the dream for authors. It is, and I'm very fortunate. I've been very lucky. I've had, uh, you know, I've had some great breaks. Uh, but you know, I've I signed the contract for Promise of Blood back in 2000 at the beginning of 2012, and the moment I signed that contract, I went full time. Um, and I've been very fortunate. You know, I, I had some dodgy times at the beginning yeah, of my career, yeah. but I was very fortunate. I've not had to, you know, go back to a day job, and uh, and it's kind of just gotten better since then. Yeah. Okay. So for those uh, viewers out there that are interested in being an author, tell us a little bit about as a full-time writer, what does your day look like? I mean, you've got to have a routine. You have to, right? Uh, that's uh, so. I'm actually the worst person to ask for advice about that kind of thing. Uh, I then tell us what the real world looks like. You no, know, the real world looks like I I mosey out of bed between nine and ten, uh, which is early now for me because I used to get out of bed at noon. Um, I mosey out of bed between nine and ten, and I uh, I spend a, an hour or two kind of doing the the mundane stuff, which is answering emails, uh, taking care of all the business things, which when you're a full-time writer you get lots of business stuff yeah. you have lots of people asking for your time and you have you know you're running a small business um, and so I spend the first couple hours of my day doing that and oftentimes I'll then do yard work or play video games or do whatever I want um, I do uh, I do a lot of my writing in the evening um, kind of after I've gotten my day out of the way yeah. um, I spend a lot of time thinking about what I'm gonna write I write very quickly but only if I've prepared yeah. and so there's lots of setting up dominoes in my brain to get everything ready um, so I'll go through a day doing just mundane things I'll play video games I'll do yard work I'll you know go out that kind of thing and uh, you know it's uh, it's and then I get writing done in the evening and, and there's days that I only write for an hour and and that's my day's worth of work but I've been thinking about it all day so yeah. well and you have to I mean with as many books as you got I mean you really need to well thank you so much Brian I'm so glad that you were able to be here with us and thank you for joining us on the book break we will see you next time thank you we are coming to the end of our season one and thanks to you the book break has been a huge success so at the end of our season one on September 7th we will be broadcasting live from Salt Lake City Fan X Comic Convention make sure to join us I'll be interviewing a surprise New York Times best-selling author thanks again and I hope to see you then I wrote What the Single Eye Sees actually as individual talks or sermons that I gave in sacrament meeting. And every time I gave one of those talks, I had lots of people ask me for copies. It got to the point where I was sending out dozens of copies of the talks to people and I thought maybe I should organize them into a book so they'd have, be accessible by, some, by more people. The principal focus of the book, as, as it's stated in the subtitle, is faith, hope, charity, and the pursuit of discipleship. And so I hope people who read the book feel like they have a better understanding of the relationships that are what are faith, hope, and charity. One of the key principles outlined in the fourth section of the Doctrine and Covenants for discipleship is to have your eyes single to the glory of God. That's a New Testament concept that Joseph Smith felt inspired to include in his discussion about the qualifications for being part of the work in this era. And so I use it as part of the title in order to emphasize the eye single to the glory of God. I hope you enjoy it. You can find it at barnesandnoble.com or amazon.com.